Hi, Jay here. Today I want to talk to you about a little discussed subject, and that's the spring mullet run. Yes, there's a fall run, and yes, there's a spring mullet run. And guess what? The spring mullet run is starting right now. Um, we're in the beginning of March, and uh, we're starting to see mullet gathered up, and the mullet should be uh, starting to pile up and then they're going to start moving back north for the summer. So the snook and the tarpon and the jacks and all the predators have been um, not eating too well because there hasn't been too much bait around and their metabolism is slower during the cold winter weather. So when the water heats up that signals the snook they're going to have to start eating a lot more and all the other fish are going to start eating a lot more because their, their metabolism will be speeding up. Once the snook and other game fish metabolism speed up, then they know the mullet are going to be showing up soon too and they're going to be hungry. Now first, the mullet are going to be small and the snook are not going to want to eat the huge ones. But as time progresses and as we get closer, to the summertime, the snook are gonna to have to start eating more and more because guess what? The snook spawn in the summer and um, on the west coast they start spawning a little sooner in April and then uh, usually the end of April. And then the east coast they start spawning at the end of May, beginning of June. And the spawn will last probably till September on the west coast and probably till October on the east coast. Now, Fishing the spring mullet run is not quite like the fall. The schools are going to be much more scattered and they're going to be less dense and they're not going to be running up and down the beaches. For the most part, they're going to be in little pockets of, you know, maybe 30 or 40 in, in a school and um, they're going to be not running so fast. They're just going to make it, be making their way slowly up north so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find out where these mullet are and you're going to want to fish near them. You're going to want to fish near the mullet uh, schools, but maybe not right in the mullet schools. The snook and the tarpon are not going to be right in the schools because if they were in the schools, the, the mullet wouldn't be too relaxed, but they're not going to be too far away. Now the jacks are going to come crashing through the mullet schools and a lot of times the snook will be closer to the mangroves and the redfish and the trout will be closer to the mangroves because they don't want to get eaten by dolphin. And when the jacks come rushing in and smashing the mullet up against the uh, mangroves, the snook will sometimes will be there waiting to uh, take advantage of that chaotic situation when the mullet are going everywhere trying to get away from the jacks. So that's something you want to look for. You want to look for a lot of jacks crashing the mullet and driving them into the shoreline, be, be it mangroves or seawalls. Uh, now seawalls are another place you're going to want to fish um, this time of year in the spring mullet run, just like you do in the fall. You know, you're probably going to want to pin your mullet, if you have a live mullet for bait, up against the seawall and let them swim back and forth in an area where you've seen snook bust uh, mullet before. Now you may catch jacks, you may catch tarpon, you may even catch redfish, or even if you're um, in a certain spot, you might catch a large uh, sea trout, maybe not against a seawall, but near a mangroves. So anything kind of goes uh, in the mullet run in the springtime. You never know what's gonna show up, similar to in the fall. Uh, but you're going to want to also fish those bridges. And as you may have seen in my um, how to fish a bridge at night video and my flare hawk video, yeah, you're going to want to do that again in the spring run. You, if you're fishing at night or low light situation, you know, you may want to fish a flare hawk on, near a bridge or an inlet or a jetty, um, just like I discussed in my other videos. So that will definitely work this time of year during the spring uh, mullet run. The good thing about the spring mullet run is it's not nearly as crowded as the fall mullet run. 
there's going to be a lot more uh, people in the fall fishing the mullet run and you know they're going to be a lot of people you know at the piers and the jetties and the inlets and also the beaches so the spring uh, mullet run is kind of like a big secret and only a few people know to fish it but if you uh, talk to a lot of people they'll tell you yeah there is a spring mullet run and uh, it's similar to the fall run only smaller and the best thing about this spring mullet run is the fish are going to be hungrier they haven't eaten for a long time the water's going to be warming up and they're going to be extra hungry all right some of my favorite top waters to use at any time of year including the spring mullet run are the skitter walks and as you can see i like to use these with single inline hooks you don't need treble hooks to rip up the mouths of all these snook that you're going to release because you're going to have to probably at least you know if not 95 percent of them three quarters of them that are not in the slot so you know you want something like this that's got a a 1-0 or a 2-0 um, and um, that's what i like to use if you want to use a treble go ahead but it's going to catch your line and it's going to rip up the mouths of any kind of fish you catch um, and this is another one I like to use. It's a Yozuri pencil popper. Um, this is slightly bigger profile than the skitter walk. This will get the strikes from the big girls. Um, and you work it the same way as any top water, walk the dog style. But you're gonna have to figure out the cadence. You know, if the water's a little bit cold um, and it's overcast, you know, you might wanna go a little slower earlier in the morning. If it's later in the day and the water's warmed up, you know, you want to go a little faster. But try it out. Try different retrieves. Um, let it stop for a little while and uh, then, you know, do a long pause and then start it up again. Sometimes that drives them crazy when you just stop it and it just sits there in front of their face. They can't stand it and then they'll whack it. But other times, you know, they want it to go really fast. Other times they want to really go slow. So mix it up. Okay, this little yellow one, it's a Spook Junior. I think that's what this one is too. Um, oh, I don't have the name. Oh, yeah, it looks like, it's the same length. Both of these are Spook Juniors. I got the single inline hooks. And if you're gonna put the hooks in line, make sure the rear one has the point back towards the back and the front one has the point towards the front. Um, that's the proper way to rig these. This is a Top Dog Junior, and this is a Top Dog Regular, I guess, and a bone color. And you can hear that's got, well, I guess my microphones are here. It's got a big old rattle in this one, and this one's got like a smaller rattle. If you have a particular bait you like to use this time of year, by all means, use it. Uh, I'm not saying you only have to use top water. But if you see jacks blasting on the top and then you, you know, mullet naturally run on the surface. So, you know, if you see them getting blasted on the top, you know, you're going to probably want your bait on the top. Now, this is an NLBN uh, little mullet. This works great. If you skip it across the top, that always draws a snook's attention. So this is another good one. You can fish it like a top water or you can, you know, let it dive down a little bit and let it sink uh, and then skip it across the top. The skipping noise just kind of drives them crazy and that makes them uh, hit the lure. So let's talk about where else you want to fish. Um, you're going to want to fish the docks um, and you may want to do some night fishing and uh, fish the dock lights at night because um, you know the mullet are going to gather up around the perimeter of the dock lights and you can do that um, you can also fish the bridges at, at night you can also fish the inlets at night you can fish the inlets in the daytime with the live mullet now if you're going to fish uh, the inlets you know um, with the live mullet um, you may want to pin them down towards the bottom depending on how bad the rocks are on the bottom um, or you may want to um, go on the, and keep them on the surface depending on how swift the current is if you're fishing a bridge and you see popping actions on the top again you're going to want to hook them through the lips and fish them uh, you know free lining that way um, 
You can also put a weight on them, hook them in the tail or hook them in the back and get them to swim up like that. Um, it just depends on, on what you think is going to work, you know. And uh, don't just keep trying one thing, you know. If you're not getting in a bite uh, free lining, then hey, maybe you should try a weight and put a weight through the lips. You can also do a jig through the lips and get it down near the bottom and fish that way. You can do that too on the sea walls, you know. Uh, I've experienced it where, you know, the bigger snook don't want to go up to the top, the littler snook are popping all the baits on the top and the bigger snook are just sitting down near the bottom waiting for something to make a mistake and uh, they're not going to compete with the little fish so, you know, the big fish are going to be near the bottom sometimes. And um, also you're going to want to uh, fish near schools of mullet. You know, you're going to have to get bait and um, if you do do bait fishing and if you don't do bait fishing, you're still going to want to fish near the schools of mullet. It's, you know, it's a big desert out there and there's certain oases of mullet and bait and that congregate in certain areas and you're going to have to just keep going and looking for those areas because uh, that's where you're going to want to fish. A, a big snook is not going to sit in an area where there's absolutely no food. Another thing I've noticed um, recently since I've been paddle boarding is you'll, you'll paddle up to a place uh, and you won't see any mullet jumping or flicking or doing anything in the distance and you'll think, oh wow, nothing's going on here. But when you get closer with either the paddle board or the kayak or the boat, all of a sudden the bait will get nervous, they'll start jumping, they'll start flicking. And um, so sometimes you've got to get a little bit close to the, these mangroves and uh, seawalls to see if there are any baits there. Um, because they could be there and they're just under the surface and they're relaxed. Um, but now all of a sudden you drive up and they get nervous and they start jumping, they start flipping. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're like warning each other that there's a predator in the area, which in that case would be your boat or your paddleboard or your kayak or whatever it is. But all of a sudden they start getting a lot more active um, when you get close. So sometimes you, you actually got to drive over to where you think they might be and yeah, you, know, you get over there and all of a sudden, boom, they're starting to flick. And that helps you out not just um, catching the snook, but if you're looking for the mullet and looking for the bait, you know, you can, uh, you can find them that way by just driving over there. Um, also, um, this spring uh, mullet run is not just limited to snook. There's also tarpon. Um, there's also the jacks. There's also the ladyfish. There's also the bluefish. Bluefish uh, usually come through Florida in April, the big bluefish. Sometimes they, you know, go offshore, but sometimes they come inshore. We've caught some recently in the Indian River Lagoon, and um, they're right in there with the jacks. They're mixing it up with the jacks, and they kind of work together with the jacks. Um, so you might, you might catch anything. You might catch sharks. Um, it, it, just the sky's the limit. But, you know, if you're focused on snook, which I am most of the time, um, this is a good time to get out there and try all the areas that you'd usually try where you would uh, maybe fish in the fall. The only place I wouldn't concentrate too much on is the beach. They don't run up and down the beach like they do uh, in the fall in a thick mass that you can see. There still could be some, you know, scattered here and there, but um, I think they're going to be in uh, shore more than they're going to be offshore. Now, where can you do this? You can do this from the Florida Keys. There's good, um, there's a good mullet migration um, that goes up through the Keys. I actually, I think that's where it starts from. And there's good tarpon action off the Keys bridges, all the typical, usual, uh, you know, uh, main bridges where there's a lot of current and a lot of tarpon uh, starts, you know, right now until, you know, beginning of uh, June and then it kind of peters out as the tarpon migrate north uh, go way up north some of them go as far as like Virginia I think and then they go on the west coast they go all the way around to Texas and all the way around through Mexico but yeah the tarpon are going to fire up and they're going to start their um, chasing the mullet pretty soon and you know eventually they're going to leave town in the Keys and down in South Biscayne Bay and start heading north and you know 
you can talk to your buddies down south and find out exactly, you know, is there a tarpon bite yet or not, you know. Uh, I already got the juvenile tarpon bite. Uh, I wasn't too successful on the hooking up, but I got a lot of bites one day. I got like 10 bites the other day. So, yeah, look for the, to catch some tarpon. Um, the redfish, Mosquito Lagoon, should be heating up too with this run of mullet. Um, then also, um, you know, you're going to get you know the final push of like uh, mackerel and kingfish chasing the chasing these baits and uh, you know you really just got to pay attention and uh, be ready to get out there at a moment's notice when you hear you know the bites going off so all right I just wanted to let you all know the spring mullet run is about to begin so start hitting your favorite spots your favorite docks your favorite jetties your favorite inlets, favorite bridges, and maybe in the spillways. If you get some rain uh, and the spillways open up, you know, there could be some snook in there as well. All right, tight lines.